Now that we know the definition of z-score, both the population and sample z-scores, we want to apply it to a problem. And we're going to look at heights of individuals. So the mean height of men 20 years or older is 69.2 inches with a standard deviation of 2.9 inches. The mean height of women 20 years or older is 64 inches with a standard deviation of 2.75 inches. So two random people named Edward and Bella, for all you Twilight fans out there, um, have two different heights. So Edward is six foot one and Bella is five foot eight. Who is absolutely taller? Well, absolutely means in real life terms when they're standing next to each other, who's taller? Well, Edward, right? Edward is six one and Bella is only five eight. So let me type that in. So he, Edward is six feet one, Bella is only five eight. So that makes about five inches of difference that he is taller than her by five inches. All right, but it's not fair to compare Edward and Bella directly because of course he's a man and she's a woman and they each have different means. So let me type that up real quickly. All right, so men and women, men are taller than women on average. So it's not really fair to compare the raw heights, right? Because we assume that, Bella, that Edward will be taller. In general, Edward would be taller since he's male. All right, so what are some other variables that we could measure that would not necessarily be fair to compare directly? And I was just thinking of men and women, just for starters. So for men and women, it's not fair to compare the ages at first marriage, for example. Um, so men tend to be older at the age of the first marriage than women, or the age of the first child. So age when you have your first child, I should say. When um, first child born, right? So by the same token, men tend to be a little bit older when their first child is born than women. Not always, but that tends to be the trend. Weight, right? If men are taller, they tend to be heavier. Shoe size, that would be another one, right? Waist size. The list goes on and on and on, right? So if they tend to be larger, then all those things that you'd measure about them physically wouldn't necessarily be fair to compare directly because you expect men to be bigger, right? You expect men to be older. Right. Although that's less and less the case, but that used to be very much the case back in the 1950s and so on. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find Edward and Bella's Z scores and use them to explain who is relatively taller. All right, so let me type that up real quickly. All right, Edward's Z score, let's think. First of all, his height is 73 inches. Now, the way I get that is I multiply 70, or excuse me, six times 12 because he's six feet tall and they're 12 inches and a foot plus there we have it i just typed it up for you so six times 12 plus one makes 73 inches so i take 73 take away 69.2 and divide it by 2.9 and i'm going to grab a calculator for that there we have it now what we want to do is we want to make sure that order of operations is preserved and the order of operations is that you'll do that numerator first so you want to use um Parentheses, 73 minus 69.2, close your parentheses, divided by 2.9, enter. And you get 1.31. So he's tall, but not, you know, abnormally high because he's not past two standard deviations. All right, now let's do the same thing for Bella. So Bella is 5 foot 8. So she's 5 times 12 plus 8, which is 68 inches tall. Okay, so to find the z-score for Bella, we're going to have to take 68, which is her height, minus the average for women, which is 64, and divide it by the standard deviation for women, which is 2.75. So let's go grab a calculator. All right, parentheses, 68 minus 64, close your parentheses, divided by 2.75. And again, that's because you want to preserve keeping that numerator done first and then division. All right, that's the order of operations. And so you get 1.45. No, Kristen Stewart is not actually this tall. I made it up, but bear with me here. So we've learned a valuable lesson. Who is relatively taller? Bella is relatively taller because 
her z-score is higher than Edward's. So with these fictional characters that I made up, Edward is the shorter one in relative terms, but the taller one in reality. So when they stand next to each other, he's definitely taller than her. But when you compare their Z scores, you find out that her she at five foot eight is taller respective to all women than he is in comparison to all men. Right. So if you compare her to all women right here, you find that she's 1.45 standard deviations above the mean. So a good way, not unusually tall, but a good way towards the mean. Whereas he is only 1.31 standard deviations above the mean. So he's absolutely taller, but he's not relatively taller. So now let's take it a step further and go with some short people. So U.S. Olympic female gymnast Gabby Douglas, who won the gold medal in the all-around competition in the London 2012 Games, is 4 feet 11 inches tall. U.S. Olympic bronze medal gymnast Daniel Leva from the same um, London Games, he won the bronze medal in the all-around competition. Um, he's five foot seven. So who is relatively taller? Hmm. Okay, tricky. Well, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find their heights in inches so that we can use them for this distribution here. So let's start with Daniel. Daniel Levia. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. So, but he was very fun to watch, I will say. Um, I love watching the pommel horse and all those other competitions. I love gymnasts. All right, so 5 times 12 plus 7. So he's 67 inches tall. And while I'm on the subject, Gabby, she was 4 times 12 plus 11. So that's 48, 59. So she's 59 inches tall. So quite short, actually, but not, well, she's unusually short, but um, she's not freakishly unusually short. So she's right on the border there. All right, so now let's find the z-score for Daniel. So let's see here. Daniel, he was 5 foot 7, so he's 67 inches, minus 69.2 divided by 2.9. So let me grab the calculator real quickly. Parentheses, 67 minus 69.2. Close parentheses, divided by 2.9. And we expect this to be negative, and it is, because, of course, both of these are gymnasts, which means, generally, they're short. 7, 5, 9. How about that? So he's negative 0.759. Now we want to do the same for her. She's 59 inches, take away 64, divided by 2.75. So let me grab the calculator, parentheses, 59, take away 64, close parentheses, 59. There we go, 59, take away 64, divided by 2.75. She's negative 1.818 repeating. So, who is relatively taller? Well, he is. He's absolutely taller, but he's also relatively taller. And it's because he's less negative than her. His z-score is above hers, if you will, right to the right of hers on the number line. And there we go. So, not only is he absolutely taller, but he was relatively taller as well. And so, um, if they stood next to each other, he would be taller than her straight up because he's 67 inches tall and she's only 59, right? But in this case, it also worked out that he was relatively taller than her because his z-score was not as negative as hers. She's much shorter in comparison to women than he is in comparison to men. All right, now what about Yao Ming? Yao Ming was the center for the, from China, he was originally from China, for the Houston Rockets, oops, excuse me, and he was seven feet, six inches tall. Well, there's a lot of inches. So we need to figure out first how tall that is. So, so Yao Ming. He is 7 times 12 plus 6, which is 90 inches tall. Quite tall. All right, so now we need to find his z-score and then explain what that means for him. So there we have it. So I have 90 take away 69.2 over 2.9. It's the same calculation we've done before, but I'll show it to you. 
and you get 7.172. Let me say that again, 7.172. He is seven, over seven standard deviations past the mean. He's extremely tall, right? He's far past two standard deviations. So he's very unusually tall. Okay. All right, then what about if you compared him to NBA players? Well, okay, so I don't know if you know much about the NBA, the National Basketball Association in the U.S., but in general, to be an NBA player, it helps greatly if you're a tall person. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean there aren't some great players that are shorter. Um, Isaiah Thomas comes, springs to mind. But in general, you tend to be a taller player. Oh, another great short player I just thought of is Spud Webb. He won a dunk contest despite being only five foot seven, which means he was one of the shortest players in NBA history. Kind of impressive, don't you think? Anyway, um, so we want to know the mean height, or excuse me, the mean height of NBA players is six foot seven. So it's bearing out my supposition that in general NBA players tend to be taller. They have a larger spread, but of course that makes sense. They're a smaller distribution. And if you're going to have people like Spud Webb and Isaiah Thomas that are five seven, five eight, and then you're going to have people like Yao Ming in there, you're going to have a wide variety. So now we need to find the Z score here. There we have it. So I take 90, take away 79. Now the 79 is coming from, and I'll just type it up, six foot seven is the NBA average. So NBA average is six foot seven. So you want to take six times 12 plus seven, which makes 79 inches. Okay, so there's your new average right there. So we say, okay, well, I'm going to take Yao Ming because he's still 90 inches tall, but I'm going to take away 79. I'm going to divide it by 3.5. And when you do that, parentheses, 90, Take away 79, close parentheses, oopsie, close parentheses, there we go, divided by 3.5. Sure enough, you get 3.143, right? Now, that's still unusually tall, right? So it's still unusual because his z-score is above 2, but it's not nearly as dramatic a difference between him and other NBA players as there is between him and the population of all men in the U.S., right? All men in the U.S., his Z-score is 7.17. So very, 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 very tall. On an NBA court, he's still tall, but he's not quite as unusually tall as he is if he just walks down the street, right? I mean, quite frankly, a lot of NBA players are unusually tall when you compare them to the whole of society. But when you put them on the NBA court, they don't appear so tall because they're around a bunch of other tall players. And that just shows the power of the Z-score, right? The Z-score allows us to compare different groups in a different way. We all know when Yao Ming walks in the room that he's tall, but how does that compare to NBA players? How does that compare to his home country? How would that compare to other groups of, you know, Chinese basketball players or something like that? All of those things can be compared as long as you're using Z-scores because Z-scores allow you to do those comparisons in a way that direct numbers couldn't. We know he's 90 inches tall, but that doesn't really mean much to us until we see, whoa, he's 7.17 standard deviations above the mean. That really puts it in perspective. And then when you change it to the NBA players and you see how much it dropped by, that also puts into perspective how tall the NBA players are. So the, the Z-score is super powerful because it allows us to make these comparisons of disparate groups. And that is very important to us now, and it will be extremely important once chapter seven and beyond hit. All right, that's the end of that example. I'll see you back here for more videos.